What's up guys? Welcome back to Unique Arts. I am Costco Picasso. You can also call me Shane and if it really floats your boat. Uh, today I'm just going to be looking at my antique book collection. I don't have too many. I have about a dozen to show you guys, but I got this idea about, well, I mean, it's been in the back of my mind for about two and a half years since my twin brother did it on his channel. I'll put a link in the description for that. Liam at Liam's Lyceum. But I thought it was really interesting. I'm not sure I knew all those books that he had, but I, uh, I just really enjoy old books. I guess I wouldn't mind being a collector of them if I had more money. I only have about a dozen and I've gotten them all pretty cheap. Use bookstores and all that. But either way, I'm going to show uh, my collection to you guys. Please feel free to enjoy yourself. Okay guys, we're going to dive right into it. So I'm just going to do these in order of what is the youngest to the oldest? And this is the youngest one I have. So this is actually part of a series, the Civilization series by Will Durant. This is the third volume, Caesar and Christ. This is actually the only one I have that is this earlier print. All the other ones are uh, edition after. So they were printed in the 50s. This one was printed in 44, 1944. So it is the youngest one I have. It's been a vintage, uh, sorry, an antique book for about five years now. And I've not read through this book entirely. I've not read through any of the books in the, that uh, cycle. I've read through, I mean, I've read here and there. And I don't know if I will ever read through all of them. I don't know if it's anything like, you know, just like a idea of general history like that. I'm not sure I am interested in doing that. But either way, I got these. They were a gift from one of my professors during my undergraduate studies. And either way, I really appreciate that I got them from my professor. So here we are. Okay. And on to this one. So the first few of these are a bit odd. Like that one, like I said, is part of a series and it's actually the only one of the 10 or so that I uh, that is old enough to be considered antique. And we're just going by the, that standard of antique that if it's 75 years or older, so 1949 would be the cutoff here. And uh, this is Pack Up Your Troubles. This one's a bit different too, just because it's kind of not really mine. Uh, this is my wife's, so it's in my house on one of my bookshelves. But either way, this is kind of a collection of poetry. My wife goes through this periodically. I have never gone through it, actually. I might do that. Most of the shorts on my channel, if you're acquainted with my channel, are just uh, short poems that I can uh, read within a minute. Oop. There's a leaf there. By the way, it's in a relatively okay uh, condition. This was printed in 1942, so it's about two years older than the Caesar in Christ, but... There you have it. This just reminds me of like some Boy Scout stuff up here. Okay, and this one, this is probably the last one that won't really be like a good indicator of what my interests are as far as liking to read and study. This is the Golden Cat. I bought this, I can't remember exactly. It might've been a year and a half or within year and a half to six months ago. I can't remember exactly. It's within that uh, year window. But this is a children's story. I bought it for my children, as you may imagine. So this was uh, published in 1934. Um, it does have some illustrations throughout. It's kind of neat. I haven't read it yet. My oldest, my daughter is four. She's not quite appreciative of these longer, uh, more detailed um, stories yet. But I'm sure we will get to that point, hopefully relatively soon. But yeah, there is the golden cat. Okay, so this is the volume 11 for the Outline of Knowledge, which is a 20 volume sit. I... this. I have not read all of them. In fact, I bought them relatively recently, probably five months ago or so. And I actually have all 20 volumes there upstairs. I just grabbed the one. This is English Poetry 1. There are actually two books dedicated to English poetry in the 20 volumes. But it's a variety of stuff, just like philosophy, sciences, and uh, kind of just like a general, broad, perhaps more classical education. So I think I also will try to read through this a bit and see if there's some shorter poems that I'm less acquainted with that I might be able to take a short uh, later on see if there's anything I really like but yeah there's that they all look like this some are they're all in varying condition mostly the the variation mostly comes from it how exposed has the, the spine here been to sunlight so how legible it is but this one's 
This one's pretty good, doing pretty good. This is 100 years old this year, printed in 1924. So. Okay, next we have the last one in the 20th century. This GM on the front here is for George MacDonald. This is his Fantasties, a fairy romance. It's considered, in many regards, the first uh, modern fantasy. Uh, it was printed originally, I believe, 1856. This was printed in 1905, the one I have here. It's kind of just a pocket edition. Um, it was a lot cheaper. I bought. I mean, I buy all of these, um, generally speaking, online, but... Yeah, and I've actually not read this cover to cover. I'm pretty acquainted with uh, George MacDonald. The only one that I think I actually have read cover to cover is Lilith, one of his latest works, print, uh, published about four years after this. Um, and I do have a copy of it. Actually, I have a first edition that I'll show you guys here soon. But it's uh, not in the best condition. It's very difficult to actually read what's on the spine. But either way, it is there. I have it. I love it. I would appreciate it. Okay, and next we have a work of philosophy. This is The Sense of Beauty by George Santayana. So this is kind of part of his outline um, his thesis on aesthetics. I kind of disagree with him, generally speaking. I don't think beauty is something that you just get a sense of while you're looking at something. I think it's a more objective kind of a uh, value of. But either way, uh, still interesting read. I, uh, I'm not sure there's a single philosopher uh, for aesthetics that I like agree 100% on, but either way, this was published in 1896 by Scribner's, and uh, worth a read. This is the only like OG uh, work of philosophy that I have. So that was 1896. This is 1895, so just one year older. This is my first edition of Lilith by George MacDonald. So uh, this is pretty cool. It's in very much not good shape, though. Um, the cover is pretty legible. Um, the spine, not as much. It's also torn pretty heavily up here. And also just the front page is, this front cover is no longer attached. So there is that. It's in pretty poor shape just because of that. I know some of these uh, first editions in proper shape go for like upwards of 500 bucks. Uh, I did not pay nearly that for this because again, it's in pretty poor condition. Very much legible though, if you wanted to read it. I did not use this copy when I read Lilith though. As you may imagine, um, I got a much newer print because just like that. There's one of my George McDonald's. I actually have another one to show you guys, but yeah, this is the only first edition I have for George McDonald. And one of only a couple first editions I have, generally speaking. I don't buy books because they're valuable or that like as an investment or anything like that. Just because I buy them because I like them um, and I would like to have them. And uh, I wouldn't mind collecting books, I suppose. I just don't have the money and I don't have more than again like the dozen i'm showing you and their offshoots so oh well but there's lilith okay so this one is the only one i have not in english this is in danish actually and uh it has a companion piece that's in was published in 1898 this one is 1892 i did not bring the companion in here for the video this was printed in copenhagen uh copenhagen copenhagen i don't know um in 1892 and uh bill uh Kunstens is uh like the arts pretty much applied arts i think maybe and then film stealing of minis minis kiss kickerson i don't i don't speak danish uh this was i bought this in anticipation for maybe writing a master's thesis in art history when i applied to art history and when i didn't get into those programs um shame on you guys for not accepting me but either way it's kind of put on the back burner danish is not on my top priority for learning actually Norwegian is but if I can learn Norwegian then perhaps this will be very accessible afterwards so and this was uh, written by Julius Lang again 1892 is when it was published in Copenhagen okay and here's another one that might be 18 published in 1892 there's a chance it was also 1889 I'm not exactly sure but I do know that uh, it was printed by the Walter Scott Publishing Company in New York a 24 volume sit and they did the same thing in those two in those two years but they did not date this one, so I'm not exactly sure what uh, which it is. But this had been published pretty extensively um, in a varying uh, volumes, like just a handful. Sometimes I think there's even an edition that has just one. Um, I only have about nine of these, actually, and this is the uh, book number four. It's pretty hard to read down here. But this is um, the Wilson's Tales of the Borders and of Scotland. So more uh, focus around the borders region of Scotland, but they're all pretty much just... Folk Tales of Scotland, which I think is appreciated. I actually have a predominantly English DNA. Um, my surname is English, but I also have a 
quite a bit of Scottish as well. So, okay, the last McDonald one that I have, this is Thomas a Wingfold Curate. So this was, this is not a first edition. It's actually a trilogy and this is, um, has, is a three in one essentially here. And it, that was first done in New York in 1876. It was the first time they printed it in the US. This is, and this is the 1879 version. So the 1876 version actually looks pretty much exactly like this, except it's red. Um, and so this is done three years later, done in green. Um, I've actually not read this one at all, but as far as trilogies go, it's only about 660 pages, so not that bad. I think rel relatively approachable. This is the only page I think that is um, no longer in the binding completely, and it's part of the table of contents, so it could be worse, I suppose. But yeah, 1879 by Rutledge. They also did the original 1876 in North America. So this is uh, the, I believe the only other first edition I have. And this is T.D. McGee's or Thomas Darcy McGee's uh, History of Ireland. So it's in two volumes. I bothered to grab both volumes. This is from 1863. And uh, this man was actually assassinated in 1868. He's a pretty interesting character. Um, he was an Irish nationalist, and he actually had to flee Ireland because the British were seeking to punish him, I guess. So he fled the British police and ended up in the United States. At one point, I know he held the idea that the United States should annex Canada. Um, but at one point, he also moved to Canada and became a Canadian nationalist, essentially. Like, he was a strong proponent for Canadian nationalism and independence by the time of his death because he, he eventually turn, uh, went against the Finians and, like, thought that, you know, they weren't good essentially and so he was assassinated by them in 1868 um in canada but he wrote this it's a full title is actually in here the history of ireland a popular sorry a popular history of ireland from the earliest period to the emancipation of the catholics i've not read this uh, very thoroughly i know it's pretty outdated there's been a lot more recent scholarship these days but either way Interesting. Ireland's golden age is what it says. And that is my second to last right there. It's actually only three years older. It's printed in 1860. And you can still read it on the side there. At least I can. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. Uh, Scenes and Legends of Scotland. It's actually Scenes and Legends in the north of Scotland is the full title, as it says here on the uh, here inside. This is not in the best of shape. It's not in, pretty, it's not in bad shape, though. Very much still readable. And uh, this is uh, pretty much an exact copy of the second edition, which was printed in London, but this is technically a fifth edition. It was printed in Cincinnati in 1860. So, not sure anything else good comes from Cincinnati these days, but then again, it has been 164 years, so a lot of time for a lot of change to happen. But, either way, that's my last one. And... Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to let me know. And if you had one that you are particularly interested in, uh, feel free to ask. Perhaps you guys also have one that's similar or whatnot. You have perhaps a used uh, or like an antique book collection video that you'd like to recommend as well. I will put the I will put the link in for my brothers as well. I think it's worth watching. I thoroughly enjoy it. So either way, I will see you guys next time. Greatly appreciate it. Have a good one.